a lot. We, okay, we yeah, really don't have that deal. time. But I'm going to, what, it made me feel okay with just not knowing, um, to not knowing what's next. Because it's like, sometimes we think it's us who's guiding ourselves, but it's really not. Like, it made me feel right, okay right. with losing the control. And that was a big thing with me. I was very controlling with my life. I felt like this had to happen and this had to happen and this had to happen. All right, all right, all right, everyone. We are back with another episode of the Couch with Raw Fields. All right, so it's been a while since we've done an episode, but we got a special one today, everybody. All right, so let, let's let's break this one down. You know, we have to roll out the red carpet for our guests. So today, I'm speaking with someone who I met over the summer, and uh, you know, the conversation that we had was was pretty in depth. Little did we know. She would be on the show. We had no idea. But today we have someone who's a, a risk a risk taker, someone who's defeated the odds in a sense, and someone who's, uh, you know, just, I know, just exceptional in her approach. I can't wait for y'all to hear this one. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to talk too much, but give big hand claps to the wonderful Sin Tala. What's up, Sin? Yeah. Hey, what's, up? what's up what's up <laughs> welcome to the show oh my gosh what an opening wow me <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 we 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 have to lay out the red carpet for our guests every time you know it's it's important thanks for, thanks for coming on thank you for having me i'm yeah, so happy so, to be here yeah 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 it's 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 uh it's going to be a good one i know so sin um so you came to the podcast event over the summer mm -hmm. and at the event, I mean, we just had a great conversation. I, you may or may not remember it because, you know, it's what, six months ago. A lot of stuff happens, you know, in that period of time. But uh, you just, you kind of broke down a little bit of your story. So when we had this conversation about getting on the show, I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is going to be nice. And, uh, you know, also... Uh, what's really cool is that the timing of all of this kind of just aligned, right? Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about that in the, you know, in the pre-recorded meeting. So, yeah, just uh, yeah, just thank you, that? and also what we can let's let's do it because <laughs> in the pre-recording, it was just the day that we mm -hmm. actually set up to do it today, right? Before I got right. on the call, I made. Like I had in my head, I was like, even if this is going to end up on my birthday, I'm going to do it. My birthday is February 10th. And you had no idea about that. But I had no idea. Me, you had no idea. <laughs> in my head, I was like, if this is supposed to happen, I'm going to do it no matter what. Like no matter what, I'm going to do it. And I just remember I kind of like held my birthday in my head the whole time. So now when you're trying to mm -hmm. schedule this call, you're like, hey, I'm free every weekend in February, but the second weekend of February. Do you remember that? <laughs> I remember that. And hey, what was your reply? I was like, can I laugh? <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, my birthday is February 10th. And you were so, you were like, I'm going on a family trip the Friday of the second weekend. And I was just like, right. wow. So here we are. Al timing, <laughs> alignment, everything. And again, like even in the, you know, the, the reason that this came about was you, you were like, Hey, you know, I'm thinking about doing this and that, mm -hmm. you know, Hey, what's up with the, with the podcast? Like everything just worked itself out for us to be here. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So Sin, usually when I have people on the show, I like to start from the beginning. All right. So the best, mm -hmm. I feel like the best way to talk about where we are now is it's first of all context, but also to start from the beginning so that people can really understand who you are. Are you cool with that? Absolutely. All right, nice. So tell me about young sin, the younger version of yourself. Wow. What are some of the things you liked? 
how you know what was your life like just give me just give me some background it's crazy that you even asked that because that has been me for the last few months since like I want to say since like October I've been trying to tap into her young sin and I have this specific picture of young sin that I'm always looking at and I'm like what were you thinking like what was going through your head at this time? Like, it's a picture of me literally thinking. And I would say, like, I'm not too far off from who I used to be when I was young because I've always been, um, like, very young spirited. Like, just, I just want everything to be fun. Like, I want to okay. have a good time, but I'm all, I was always also reserved. And that's still kind of like who I am. I open up to, people who I feel comfortable with. And when I don't feel comfortable, I'm reserved, but I'm still having a good time, but just kind of like, uh, it's not, it's not for me to come out my shell right now. Right. And a big thing about me when I was young, I used to be what people would say a snitch. <laughs> uh, you, a tattletale. <laughs> I would, I would tell on everybody. I would tell on myself. Like I would get myself in trouble, and so what, 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 where did that come from? Is it because you just like things to be right, or was there something that you know kind of happened along the way where you were like, "Yo, I, I, I just can't hold this in." I don't know what it was like, but you know what? I took it into my adulthood, and I, I made it to to the point where I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just a straightforward person. Like I'm going to be honest because. I just, I feel like lying or knowing something is not right just kind of sat in, inside of me and it was just not comfortable. It was just like, okay, now nah, I got to tell my mom about this. I got to tell my mom about this. And my mom would always say, I used to discern her friends, like the people she'll bring around the house. I used to be like, I don't like that person. And it's, it's crazy. Would you say it out loud? I would tell my mom, I'll be like, that's not your friend. Okay. And then they, my mom and my dad, they had this one friend. <laughs> I was like, every time he comes here, you guys have issues. I don't like it. Yeah, don't say his name out loud. No, I'm not. <laughs> or you can if you want to. <laughs> I don't even know where he is right now. But that's just who Young Sin used to be. Like, I used to just be very straight to the point. Like, So you have, you have, a, you have a, a, an ability to read the room. Yes. All right. Yeah, I I think I think I'm a little bit like that too, Sam. Um of course when I was a kid, I was very shy. Mm -hmm. But you know, as I got older and I started to really develop my personality and stuff, I mean, of course I'm always willing to talk to people, but I don't jump out in front of it. You mm -hmm. know, so I'm kind of that balance between extrovert, introvert. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like being home, but I kind of like being out, you know, so, but usually when I walk in the rooms, I'm the same way, you know, I like to evaluate the room, who's around, what are people doing, and mm -hmm. then I can pretty much, you know, dictate how long I'm going to be here, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that type of stuff. Yeah. So what, so what was life like as a, as a kid? Like, I mean... Of course, you know, our connection came in the United States of America, but you weren't, were, were you born in America? No, I was actually born in Douala, Cameroon. Um, okay. So I was, you know, I moved to America when I was six. And just okay. the move in itself was like a lot of, it was a lot of transitioning within transitioning, if that makes any sense. Like, a lot of transitioning of going on. Um, we moved when I was six and I'm from, I'm from like the Francophone region of Cameroon. So I speak French. Cameroon has English and French. So I'm French speaking. So okay. before coming to America, we actually stayed in France for like six months and we were staying at my dad's place and he wanted to transition us here. But you know, we're the kids, so we're just kind of like floating, not really understanding what's being done in the background. And, you know, we're just kind of floating. And 
when we left France to come to America, we went to DC first. Um, that's initially okay. where my family wanted us to stay was DC and it just did not work out that way. And we ended up in Boston until I was about 12, 13. So wow. okay. a lot of people don't talk about that transition from one country to another, to another. <laughs> because yeah, right, 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 right. You got to understand. DC like, and Boston are different, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. But I'm saying like from Cameroon yeah. to France and from France to America, like those are transitions in, in itself. So growing up, you know, in Africa, you don't see that many, you know, white people, you don't see that many white people. So you transition to France and you're seeing white people and they're speaking French. Mm. So it's comfortable, right? I just remember yep. when we first came to America in Dulles Airport, <laughs> The first white person I saw, and I was just speaking French to them, like they understood me. They were just looking at me like, what is wrong with this girl? <laughs> wow. I was just, because I'm, I went to France for a while and I was used to seeing, you know, white people speaking French. So I'm thinking it's the same case when you come to America. So it was a lot of adjusting, a lot of adjusting. Yeah. And then going to Boston now you're like, I'm a kid. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a kid. So I'm just like, everyone is speaking a, a language that I just don't understand, like, what's going on. And if you speak to my mom, you're going to be like, surprised. Like, I went to school and I learned English within that month, the first month. The first month, I literally learned English to the point where it's like, you would be, you would be so confused. Like, were you, was, she, was she born here? Because I just did not like that I didn't know what was going on. And I was just, I just remember me in first grade, just watching people interact. And I'm like, I want to be a part of that. Like, I want to understand what they're talking about. And like, American English is so fast, you know? So it's like, I'm like, what are they saying? And in one month, I learned the whole language. Especially up in Boston, right? Like, because mm -hmm. there's... It's Boston. Like there's yeah. there's there's an accent that goes along with it, right? So it's not mm -hmm. just it's not the King's English. It's not no the most proper version of the you know the the American English language, right? So there's a, there's a little twang to it. It's kind of like being down south. Yeah, you know, it's it's a little extra a little extra sauce being put on it, right? But so I didn't what, hear so, that. So what you didn't you so you just but okay. So I want to ask you this: Was there any was there anything that came when you were in Cameroon? Did you see cartoons in English or, you know, did you, was there was, so there was no English before you got to America? No, I was watching Dragon wow. Ball Z and it was like in French. I was watching Power French, Rangers. Okay. It was in French. I was, you know, we went to a, a school, Bilang, that's bilingual, a bilingual school, but Honestly, those mm -hmm. teachers, they were speaking like the Anglophone, like the English, like the the Cameroon English, you know, which is yeah, not right, what right. Americans really speak, you know. So it was definitely yeah. like a whole culture shock, but I've never heard American English prior. So the whole Boston accent, the whole all that, to me, it was just English. They're just speaking English. I don't know anything about accents. I'm six. So I don't know anything about the twang, the, it's just English. <laughs> yeah, it just is what it is. What, what, so what, what, did you have to deal with some, oh, of course the transition comes with challenges, right? Mm -hmm. But what were some of the other challenges that you faced just adapting to this new society, this new culture? Um, it was time? a yeah, it was a consistent um, challenge, honestly. And even up until I left my parents' house, it was consistent, you know, um, because you're trying to understand where you fit in with the American culture as an African, as a Cameroonian with your background. So it's like, it was an on and off yeah. switch, right? So. Every time I left the house, I'm literally in America. 
every time I go back home, I'm Cameroonian. My mom is only speaking French. My grandma only spoke French. We're eating African food. We're not eating the French fries and the chicken nuggets. It's like at home, we're li- we're, it's like I was living, I felt like I was living two, two different lives and didn't really know how to put them in together. Um, I remember my mom packed my lunch once. She packed my brother and I's lunch. And yeah. the kids were like, that 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 smells, that smells so strong. That just smells so strong. And I just remember like being embarrassed, like, um, but it, but it's good. So what so what was it? What was it in the lunchbox? So it was called DJ. And it's like chicken okay. and plantains with vegetables, but it's just like, you know, African seasoning does come, come off a little strong. So, and you know, kids are kids. Little, they don't know. Did that, and it was probably, I'm sorry to cut you off, but it was probably busting though. It was probably it fire. So, you probably had a better favorite. lunch than. <laughs> it is my favorite. Yeah. I'm over here looking at them Everybody like. Are, as kids, we don't know it. <laughs> nope. It's literally my favorite food. That's why I wanted it for lunch. Like. It was right, literally right, right. leftovers from dinner. And I'm like, oh, no, I need to eat that at lunch. And I just remember, like, kids being like, that smells so strong. That's, what is that? What is that? And I'm just like, okay, mom, never pack the lunch again. Like, so my mom, my brother and I were like, can we just get school lunch? Like, I don't, I don't want to, it, it's just very, as a kid, it's like very uncomfortable. Because kids could be very mean unintentionally. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, kids. Kids definitely are very direct, especially yeah. if you, you know, you find some kids that are just developed, you know, in in terms of speaking and being very clear in what they say. They're very, very honest. But I mean, so I, the thing is, you know, it's it's interesting to hear you talk about that because I'm I'm in a, I'm in Europe right now, mm-hmm. and my kids basically when they cross the threshold here in our house, so when they get in the car. In the United States of America, that's that's how we carry it. You know, mm-hmm. like we speak English at home. When they go to school, they get Danish, they get Danish culture, they get Danish food, and we let them have that, right? But we want right. to make sure that they keep that they understand that we're we're a little bit different. Right. Right. Do you do you feel like having Africa at home and America outside of the house, even with the the challenges of you kind of having to change jerseys in a sense, if we're talking about sports, right? You having to take one jersey off and put on another one. Do you feel like that's helped you in where you are right now in your life? Absolutely. Um, It has its perks, I'm going to say. It has its perks and it also has its challenges. Um, Okay. Prior to this, I told you, like, you know, sometimes I process things in French. It's something I've never been able to let go of. And um, having to process things in another language sometimes could be a little challenging because it's like you could say one thing in English, but it means completely different, a different thing in French, right? But you have to kind of like in your head real time, real quick, find that happy medium. Yeah. However... I feel like it has brought me in a lot of spaces because sometimes it's like, hey, this person needs um, someone to translate this for them. And I I feel like I bring more to the table because it's just kind of like I have experience. Like I have experience. I could relate. I could help people relate. I could connect the dots for certain people. So it helped. It has helped me out a lot, actually. Um, but it does have those those challenges that I'm not too fond of, but I've gotten comfortable with. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I'm over here in Europe, and I know I've learned uh, Danish. I've learned Danish. Danish is mm-hmm. one of the most difficult languages in the world, right? And I'm pretty good at it. I'm not 100% fluent, but every time I get information, I'm translating it to English in my mind and then I'm giving it back in Danish. So that's just mm-hmm. an extra step in the yeah. translation process, right? So yeah. you know, the sometimes responses are a little bit delayed. Right. 
you know, because in theory, when you get the information, it should just be like, okay, just say it. But you, I think there's this, um, this, this idea that we have of ourselves, we want it to be right. Mm-hmm. So if the grammar is wrong, then that, that takes a hit on, you know, our, I wouldn't say ego, but it takes a hit on us personally. Like, oh man, I probably should have you know, said it this way or that way. Yeah, I get it. So, so what were some of the things that you really enjoyed? I mean, coming from um, Africa to the States, I mean, of course there's a culture change, this and that. What, what were some of the things that interest you? Like, did you, I mean, for me, I wanted to build video games. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what were some of the things that you aspired to do even at a young age at that time? Um, so I had this, I love TV shows, like the talk shows. I love those. I, I don't know. It was, it was, I think I actually learned so how like to Maury. Speak. Maury. I'm not going to lie. I, mom, if you watch this, I was watching Jerry from the footsteps when grandma was watching it. I was, like, uh -oh. I was <laughs> Oprah. It's like, it was just so amazing to see people interact like that because, you know, I've never seen that before. And even the yeah. Oprah show, my mom was a huge Oprah fan. And like, I just loved like the dialogue, like, you know, whatever the segment would be and just hearing other people's stories. And I actually learned a lot about the things I went through in my life that, you know, I wasn't aware of just by listening to Maury and learning like, oh, this is what that's called. This is what this is, you know, um, some, some deeper things and just learning through the talk shows a little bit and being able to tell my mom, like, Hey, I, I think this is what happened to me before, or, you know, and it's crazy. You could learn a lot from these talk shows, like just in general. So I enjoyed the talk shows. I enjoyed the. <laughs> you want to be a creator of those, of those shows, like a producer, the director was, was that your approach or did you just want to be like in the mix, just somewhere in that, atmosphere as a kid you're not thinking about the background you're thinking about what you see you don't really realize that there's pieces to this puzzle i'm just looking at the finishing product and i'm like wow i love how she's asking these so you want to be on the show yeah i wanted <laughs> to be the host i wanted yeah. to ask the questions i wanted to learn more about people. right 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 so um yeah that that's literally what it was for me <laughs> and Right. It's also funny. I think this is also very important because someone may have to like may need to hear this. So as an immigrant, when you come to America, you have this perceptive perception of the American dream and America is safe. America is, you know, this and the third, like being in Africa, hearing all these things. Um, and then you come here. Um, Sometimes my mom and I, we talked about this. She was like, there's so many things that I cringe that I allowed you guys to do. Like just being in the streets, like hanging out with your friends all the time, thinking that it was safe, not really realizing kids get kidnapped here. And growing up in a city like wow. Boston, you know, kids could take the bus by themselves. We walk to school by ourselves. We, we do all these things. And she said she was just way too trusting. And because there's some things I'm like, as a kid, why was I walking from city to city with my friends? Like, no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, back in the yeah, day, yeah. it was just a little bit too trusting. And um, a lot of people don't realize that because when you're in Africa or wherever exactly you are, they have this perception of America for being like the safest place. Maybe not now like it used to be. Um because we have social media now and we see like the gun violence, you know, the game. When the information but, age. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So before yeah. we're seeing the surface, we're seeing the movies, we're seeing in the movie, the lifetime movies, the neighborhoods, the quiet neighborhoods. And that's really what our parents thought when they were bringing us here. <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, but so, so even for your parents, did it ever come to a point where, you know, at that point in your life where it was like, yeah, it, it, 
what's what's going on here? Like, did your parents have a shell shock as well, or were they just kind of just taking it as it came along? Um, I mean, so- it's, a, it's it's a whole family, right? So, I mean, we're talking about you, of course, but if our parents feel angst or you know if they're uncomfortable or whatever, the children tend to feel it, right? Did you ever right. feel that at that time with your parents trying to also adjust to what's happening? Um, so. My, we, we talk so much, my family and I, we are, especially at this space, like we've been diving deep into like, what was going through your head at that time. So we've been having those conversations like as adults now. That's nice. Um, That's nice. Yeah. It's so important. It's so important. <laughs> so my dad always traveled back and forth because his business was in Cameroon and my mom, okay was here and my grandma came and she helped raise us right so my mom is trying to figure out her place in america so she was going through her own transition and she just has um, like i said she has the idea of it's safe right so aside from the the things that she has to work on internally like you know of course, she had her mom taking care of her kids as well, but she had to figure out she had her own journey and she didn't really in her mind. She was just stuck on the idea that America is safe. So I don't think that they had those issues. They had more more of the, OK, where should we actually move to? Where should we relocate to? Where should we get the house? Where does it make more sense to do these things that? more so than and it's not to say my parents didn't care about us it's just that they had a different idea of america yeah right 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 yeah that could be tough Mm -hmm. all right so we we move in a a little bit forward in the process Mm -hmm. right so there there comes a time from you know being a young kid to going to high school to possibly going to college or starting your professional life your working life or whatever what was that transition like going from being a young kid who is fresh into a new country to, you know, getting to high school and possibly going to college? Like, what was that like? So what were some of your aspirations after you started to figure it out? Was college something that was something interesting to you? Like, I, what what was that time like in your life? Um, High school was tough, man, because... We left Boston and we went to um, Northern Virginia, so the DMV area. So okay. another transition at a young age. And it's like, just when you get comfortable, just when you're like, okay, I have friends here. I, I know what this is like. I know where to go. Then you get another huge transition in a whole different atmosphere. It was like the suburbs. We went from the city to being in the suburbs and you need your parents to just go to the store. You need your parents for things that you never needed before. So yeah. now you're in high school and you're with people who have been with each other for a long time. And I was trying to find where I fit in in high school for so long to the point where I was just like, you know, I'm over it. I don't want to fit in. Like It was just a lot. So now it's time to like think about colleges and all these things, all I wanted to do was leave Northern Virginia. Like, I just wow. wanted to leave. It was, it was that intense. It was very intense for me. Um, I, like, high school, man, like, that's like a different ball game. And um, it was just very hard. And when it came to college, I was like, this is, this is my escape plan. Like, I can, I can get out of here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. And I had really high hopes on going to Temple University. Um, I got accepted, but I was really sick at that time. And a lot of people didn't know I was really sick. Um, I had developed. What, what, uh, yeah, I was just about to ask what was going on at that time. If, if I you had want to developed, share. Yeah, I had developed neuropathy. So it's basically like your nerves. I was just. Like, I guess I was overly stressed that I made myself sick and wow. I was 
constantly having to go to the hospital. A lot of people don't actually know about this part of the story. I was constantly having to go to the hospital, being hooked to machines, trying to understand like what's going on, why is she twitching? Like I would have crazy severe body twitches. Um, it was, and my mom just did not feel comfortable letting me go to another state um, at like being sick like I was. So I ended up staying at home and I did not want to. Um, but you act, every you realize everything really just happens for you because I'm okay with how life is turning out right now. And I never went to temple. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but going to going to college, I ended up going to um I did the community college for a year and then I transferred over to George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I didn't stay on campus. Um, and it's so funny because you realize how much of yourself you really don't kind of let go of. I personally was like, I can't do campus. I can't do a roommate. I can't do, <laughs> I can't do these things. So I was driving on campus and I was okay with it. I was okay with going to school and going home. But a lot of people wanted the college experience. It's like, I didn't crave that. Yeah, I was just about to ask, did you, like now looking back on it, do you wish you had an opportunity to have that college experience where you were kind of immersed in to everything that was going on? Do you, do you miss it now looking back on it? Of course, when you were in it, I mean, that's just something that had come into practice, you know, because of what you went through physically, which mm -hmm. you were processing mentally through high school. I mean, at that time, it's like, nah, I want no parts. But now looking back on it, do you feel like ah, maybe it would have been cool? No. Let me tell you why. Okay. Okay. Because when I think back now, I understand how much high school pulled me away from Young Sin. And I'm like, imagine you had added college to that. It's a lot of trying to figure out where you fit in. And the fact that I wasn't like on campus, I feel like I still had a sense of self and I wasn't too influenced into like, what sorority should I join? What clubs should I be in? What I didn't feel like I have, I had to be included anywhere, if that makes any sense. Um, no, it does. At one point in my life, I was like, maybe I should have been on campus. Was that the? No, no, oh. no, no. You, yeah. yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, so to kind of interject, sorry to interrupt, but so I, I had a, a similar approach uh, to college. However, mm -hmm. I mean, I was a basketball player, but mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't stay off campus. So it's it's not similar, and in, in a way, it's similar, and it's it's similar in this way. So. Once I got to college and I became a basketball player, that's grades and basketball. That's right. it. So the partying stuff, I really did it out of necessity just to make sure that the team chemistry was in the right way, that, you know, my teammates didn't see me as a square. But on most Saturday nights, on most Friday nights, I was in my room playing video games. Like That's yeah. just... That's just what made me feel comfortable happy you know <laughs> yeah. I, I i didn't drink i didn't you know smoke i didn't do any of that stuff at that time so for me oh you guys want to go party hey if you need a ride i'll come pick you guys up so i was the dd in yeah. college you know i was the i was the driver cuz right. i mean for me playing video games you know i called my folks back home you know, Friday, Saturday nights, but I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed that to have the greatest college experience. Now where we may differ, that's why I asked you the question to some degree, I feel like maybe I should have stepped out a little bit more, not necessarily on campus and all of that. I feel like I probably, it probably would have been a little bit more fun to experience some other colleges and see how they were doing it because mm -hmm. it's, it's similar but it's different depending on you know what schools you're talking about and where you're going so i wish i would have stepped out a little bit more in that way but i don't regret 
who and what I w- was doing back at that time because it was safe. And if I wanted to be a professional basketball player, those, you know, partying and chasing after women and doing all that, that was a sacrifice that I made in order to, you know, eventually, hopefully become a professional basketball player, which, I mean, it worked out. Right. But I had to take, though, you know, that sacrifice. I don't regret sacrificing at all. You know, it was it was fine. So that's why I asked you that, uh, at, you know, do you, you know, now looking back on it, do you wish, you know, you kind of stepped out and did this or that? Yeah. The thing is, I, you know, I would go to like, you know, Howard Homecoming. I'd still have access to like, to do like, if I wanted to go party, I could, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I guess my, um, my, my mindset, because ch- like I did some shadow work. And I was like, where did this go wrong? Like, where did this go wrong? And to me, I'm like, oh, thank goodness she didn't do that. Because my whole life with the transitions that I've experienced, it was always like try to fit in, knowing I can't. And I was just not really comfortable in realizing that you just don't fit in. And it's okay back then, right? Because, you know, your kids, you want to fit in. You want to feel like I have friends. I have these people. But when I looked back, I was like, oh, college, I I did what needed, it had to have happened like that for me, like for me personally, even though I still had access to go to Howard U and like, I did go to their homecomings those weekends. It was fun, but I also love that I could still revert and go back home and do my own thing. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, it may be a little bit of foreshadowing. <laughs> you know, kind of being that square peg, trying to fit into the round, you know, the round peg, right. you know, it just doesn't fit. But, it, no. you know, nowadays, and we'll get to that part, you know, in, in relation to you, sometimes that fit is just right. Right. It, it doesn't fit, but that's right. That's exactly right. what's needed. All right. So coming out of college, like, what's the next stage for you? Like, what's what's some of your aspirations? Do you want to be a corporate CEO? Do you want to start your own business? Do you want to be on the Fortune 500 for, you know, working for some big, you know, just firm? Like, what what were some of the things that interest you coming out of college, going into this next phase into your life? Um, so in college, I had tapped into makeup. So I was, like, very into, like, the makeup world. I worked for MAC. Um, I managed a counter in Nordstrom, like a beauty counter in Nordstrom's. Um, so okay. I was like very mm-hmm. involved in like the makeup world. Um, I went to school for communication, but you know, I'm African. So when I started school, I was going to be a lawyer. <laughs> so I was just okay, like, okay, honestly, all right, all right. it's not, yeah, I was like law, like I don't have I take my hats off to lawyers because that's a lot of studying. It's a lot of reading. And I was like, you know what? Communications PR will do just fine. So I, I really got involved in like, just like the PR world. Like, how do you clean someone's image? Like, how do you do that? I was really into those kind of things. Um, also really interesting, isn't it? Yeah. um, I'm, I mean, I didn't graduate. I didn't graduate in the public relations side of things. I, you know, I did the mass communications things, which is great because I'm using a lot of that stuff now. Right. <laughs> but uh, the PR stuff, like we, that's that's also another process that's happening, kind of behind the scenes that people don't really understand. You know, yeah. public relations is that's it. They're like that's that's entertainment in a nutshell. Right. Yeah, sorry that's to interrupt, really but, uh, yeah. No, no, you're fine. That's what moves the needle. And you learn that. Like, I learned that that's what public relation is really what moves the needle. Um, and I also had a minor in event planning and tourism because I love to travel. I loved events. So it's like, I feel like school for me was all over the place. I'm like, why, why all these things? It makes no sense. I started as a lawyer. I wanted to do family law. I'm like, why? Like, none of this makes sense. But again, everything happens for us because it makes sense later. So coming out of college, um, I got into being a leasing consultant. So I was leasing for high profile clients. And 
that it's like I hate to say this, but everything happens for us. Like you're exactly where you need to be. Like everything really brings you to your next steps. Like I needed to be there to meet my client in order to get into AWS. So at a very young age, I was working in corporate America and it was like a whole different world. And it, and it came from that client? It, from it, that, that client. That, that process started from that particular client. Yep. So, Simply so, but how, okay. So yeah, yeah. I was about to ask, so how did yeah. this get started from a client? Cause I mean, it's a business transaction is usually that, right? But a lot yep. of times people don't say, I see you as an asset. Cause that's the separation. So you have Ooh. this straightforward business deal and then you, you have an asset where you see someone, you're doing business on this side. And mm -hmm. then you're looking at the person on the other side of the business deal and you're saying, wait, maybe I can use this person in, in to you know to do what we're doing in in my firm how did how did that happen let me tell you first of all the leasing job i promise you i never applied to it i literally never applied to be a leasing consultant i don't know where they got my information how they called me supposedly i applied but i promise you i never applied to be a leasing consultant um i was in the makeup world like i said i literally was working at mac and i was over mm -hmm. being at mm -hmm. mac I was over it and I started applying to jobs, but I know for like to the point where I would go back into my emails and I'm like, I never applied for this job like ever. And at first I was like, is this real? Because like, I, I didn't put in this application, but now I understood I had to be there and be myself. Yeah. So a big thing about me is I love being authentic. Like, I love just showing up as myself because I feel like we live in a world that a lot of people are not doing that. And for a long, a long time, I struggled with myself. Like I struggled with just, just being myself because I'm like, who am I? Like, am I, am I African? Am I like, am I American? Like where, where do I fit in? So I stopped all that. And when I was leasing, leasing is kind of like being a realtor, right? Just on a kind of like mm -hmm. a smaller scale. And okay. I like to listen to people and hear their concerns, hear their problems, but I don't know why this lady, like till this day, I love her because she changed my life. Like at 24, she changed my life. Um, mm -hmm. She came and, you know, she was looking for an apartment, but I don't know why I was just looking at her. I felt like it was a little deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? Like it just, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes what you just that? know. It just it's it's a yeah, it's different. You know, it's like, wait, did did I just feel something in this yeah. cuz again in business you don't it, there's no feelings, right? Right. But, but sometimes when you do a certain job, you like, wait, something just touched me. You know, like something is going on here. It felt like she was running. And I don't know what wow. it was. And we went to like look at the apartments that I had. Mind you, these are high profile clients. Like, so we went to go look at apartments that were available and they weren't doing it for her. And I was just like, there was this one apartment and it was like, uh, it was like, no one really liked that because of where it was in the building. And like, you know, it wasn't facing the sun. Like, you know how people are so specific. And I was just right. like, let me take her there because I kind of feel like she'll like it. I don't know why, but I felt like she'll like it. I went in there and I, you know, I toured her the apartment and she came back crying. And I was what? like, what? I was thrown off. I was like, what? Like, she's like, this is the one. Like, she's like, this is the apartment. And I was just like, okay, like, you know, like, are you okay? Like, I was just thrown off. So fast forward months later, she circles back, right? Months later, she comes to, she used to be so kind. She, I mean, she still is. She's so kind to me. Like for Christmas, she'll buy me Christmas presents. I'm like, wow, I really touched this lady. Like she got me some diamond earrings. Like, I'm like, I what? really, yes. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I really touched this lady. Not really realizing exactly like what I did because I never went into detail because I feel like if you want to share, you're going to share. 
And months later, she came down. She was like, hey, I want you to work for me. I was like, what? <laughs> She's like, what oh, are you wow. like? Are you happy like working here? I was like, I'm not really doing anything. Like I'm 24. You know, I'm just like, I mean, sure. I know she qualified. Whatever's to make clever. Her. <laughs> I'm like, whatever qualified her to make her here, she's making money. Like, cool. Like, I, sure. What are you doing? She was like, okay. Um, I want you to work for me. I want you to be a recruiter. Um, and then she explained to me her experience, which I won't share because that's her experience. Then she of explained course, to course. me her experience and she was like, you have all the qualities and AWS has like these leadership principles, right? Amazon, they have these leadership principles. And then she was like, the way you handled me when I was looking for my apartment, you had all those qualities and you exceeded. And she was like, I know that it, you will be the perfect fit for this role. And that's how I got introduced to the tech recruiting space. Okay, so you so you get into the tech recruiting space just because you provided someone with someone with a personal boost experience, yep. something that made them feel good, something that was, you know, exceptional. Excuse me, <clears throat> on on her scale of just kind of analyzing people and this and that. So yep. I'm, I want to move to this and so you get into the tech space, mm -hmm. and for all of us, we. We get into this process, right? Where we're okay. we either chasing money, we're chasing longevity, we're chasing our future, we're chasing for some people material things. We get into this this process, and then something for some people, this doesn't happen to everyone. Mm -hmm. Something happens to us where we say, "This is not enough." Mm -hmm. I, I, there, a transitional period starts again. Mm -hmm. So you faced a lot of transitions right. throughout your story, throughout your life. Right. At some point in time, a trend, a transition took place and you said, okay, I need another change. Can you explain how this transitional phase, this new transitional phase started to take shape? Um, so it was actually when I left AWS, um, which was like three, two years ago, I think. And then mm -hmm. it was, ha the, the transition was happening, but I wasn't really staying still enough to understand like what is happening. So I'm thinking, oh, it's just, you need to switch companies, right? So I switched from AWS to went and I went to DocuSign. I was like, maybe I just need a different company, like something new, right? And yeah. when I went to DocuSign, I excelled in my role just like I did in AWS and I did really quick. So it got to a point where I'm going to bring up God. Everything happens for a reason. And um, we went on this uh, hiring hold. And during the hiring hold, I was like, okay, a month goes by. I'm like, okay, how are they still paying us? Two months go by. I'm like, okay, how are they still paying us? So these months are going by. I'm like, okay, maybe I should look for another job, right? And when I started wanting to look for another job, it was like, no. Like, God was telling me no. He was literally saying no. Every time I wanted to entertain the idea of looking for another job, like something would happen. It was strange. I want I want to I want to interject a little bit. So okay. you talked about you never had a chance to be still, right? Mm -hmm. And you know we're talking about spirituality. We're talking about God and everything. Mm -hmm. What I've learned through life is if you don't take that personal accountability and sit down, sometimes life will sit you, sit you down, down, <laughs> yep. sit our butts down, right? Mm -hmm. Did you have a sit down moment or were you able to say, let me, things are happening. Let me sit down, be still, and let me process everything that happened. Which, which one happened? Um, I got pulled and I got called to sit down. Okay. Like, all right. All right. 
I got called to sit down. Like, like you said, if you don't pay attention and it's like, I've always had, I've always wanted bigger. I was also transitioning, not only, you know, oh, business, this, down the third, but as a woman and my needs started changing, you know? Okay. So there was a lot right. of transitions and I'm like, I had to ask myself at the top of last year, like, what are your desires? Like, what does your life really look like? You know? And I came to the conclusion, even before everything that had took place, I was like, you know, I desire to just be a mom and to be a wife and to have passive income. Mm -hmm. That's just sufficient. Those are my personal desires. So I came to that conclusion. Right. So I have wrote down, I want to get paid for living my life. And it's, be careful of the things you ask. Plus, plus one. <laughs> yeah, plus one. I need to add me to that list. <laughs> I was like, okay, be careful of the things that you ask. And so it got, it got to the point where fast forward DocuSign, I got laid off in September during the the, the huge tech layoff that's still taking place. So I got laid off in September and that was like the calmest I felt. Like I was very proud of myself because I was like, sin two years prior to that would have been freaking out. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to do this? But it was just kind of like, okay, like, all right. And I just kind of like, let it be. And of course you have connections and people find out they're like sending people jobs your way. And I knew I was not supposed to be working and I was called to rest because I would have job interviews. And every time right before the interview, I would feel sick to my stomach. I had wow. three interviews and I had the same feeling like sick to my stomach feeling like, I can't do this interview right now. Like, and then I was just like, you know what? Maybe I'm not supposed to work right now. And let me just trust the rest, right? I'm, let me just trust it. So I was called to rest for like two months. And like when I sat down and all the ideas started coming to me, all the downloads, like this is what you have to do. Like I'm talking about step one, step two, step three, step four. So I'm like, what? I was never able to think this way until that that resting period. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I. It's just something about listening, right? So for a lot of us, especially you know, in the day and age that we're in, we're we're always. Um, some some people overshare, right? But I think, you know, for us uh, introverts, you know, as people who are kind of always analyzing, we we like to think our way through a lot of processes. Mm -hmm. And um, I think for you now, being who you are, who you who who you were, and who you are coming up, I think is very useful now. Because mm -hmm. being an introvert means that you just kind of sit and a lot of times you observe. Yeah. Through that observation, there's a level of listening that is required. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of us who are always on the go, we never take a time, we never take the time to actually analyze what's happening and listen. I think for you, because you have had this uncanny ability to kind of go back into your to yourself. Right. When it was time to listen, you were ready to listen. Mm -hmm. You were ready. Like a lot mm -hmm. of people, because life is going here and there, we're doing so much. When it's time to listen, when we are called to listen, we are not ready yeah. because <laughs> we have this date to make. We have a meeting to make here. You know, if you have children, like the, the kids have to do this, the kids have to do that. So you were, at, I, we talk about timing, right? Right. You were at a perfect place in your life where, Okay, you got laid off, but you were ready to open up your mind, open up your ears, and, act, and 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 open your eyes and say, "Okay, let's 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 pump the brakes on where I want to go. Right. Let me actually listen to what's being given to me." Right. And now I'm going to use this to move forward. Right. Okay. So, what 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 happened as a result of 
you taking some time to listen and just process what was being put in front of you. Okay, like you you know, all, you getting all the signs that I shouldn't take this uh these interviews. What what's what have you what what is the result of you sitting, listening, being still and saying, "Okay, I need I need to do something else." Um a lot. Um <laughs> A lot. We, okay, we yeah, don't yeah. have Let's that build. time, but I'm going to, what, it made me feel okay with just not knowing, um, to not knowing what's next, because it's like, sometimes we think it's us who's guiding ourselves, but it's really not like, it made me feel right, okay right. with losing the control. And that was a big thing with me. I was very controlling with my life. I felt like this had to happen and this had to happen and this had to happen. I used to like write down my manifestations at the top of the year, pray over them. And this year, like God was like, don't write anything down. Like, I'm not impressed. You asked for this, you got it. You asked for this, you, you, I'm not impressed. And now I feel like I'm in like a faith walk and he shows out every single day. Like, to the point where, like, you know, I have people who I know also got laid off and they're like, are you really just trusting God that much? Like, are you not worried about your bills? I'm like, I haven't been working since September. Right. And I'm the happiest I've ever been. <laughs> like, and I see how God is working in my life every single day. Like, I'm trusting the process. And the biggest thing with manifestation that... I want to actually say is that we tend to manifest things and put timelines on it and say, Hey, by November, I want to do this by November. I want to do that. And then we get upset if by November you you didn't do that. You didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, who said so what, what, what happens to the manifestations when you don't get it at that time? It, they usually go to crap, right? Exactly. You're discouraged. You're, you're like, but it's like you are mad at yourself because it's like, who told you it was going to happen that way? And now for me, yeah. it's like my walk by faith is just like everything has just been aligning. Like every time I say I want something, it falls in my lap. It falls in my lap. Yeah. I've been experiencing like the the craziest encounters and it's just kind of like the right people come into your life at the right time. They bring in the ideas that actually coordinates with the things that you already have in mind to push you forward. And it's just like everything falls in your lap when you don't really have those expectations. I had to learn to have to stop having expectations. I used to have expectations for everybody that was in my life. And it's like I can't expect anything from anybody but myself. And that's just that, you know. Yeah. But when you really start having faith, like, okay, I already have the vision. You realize that every day is just a step towards it. It doesn't matter how long it takes, but it's going to happen. Yeah. I, th I think the big part of it, Sin, is, okay, manifesting is very important, but you talked about, you know, there's, there's no need to put a time limit on it. I think the mm -hmm. most important thing about manifestation is not only addressing it and, and, and saying it or writing it down, it's just knowing that it's going to get done. Yeah. I'm going to get it. <laughs> it's just a matter of time. I'm going to get it. And, uh, you know, like you said, like when you put that time limit on it, it's very discouraging. Mm -hmm. And if you're being discouraged, it slows down the process. Because a lot of times it's like, oh, man, you know, I said it was going to take 60 days. What if it takes 65 days? Right. Are you just going to stop at day 60 and say it's not enough or day 30 and say we're not on the process? No, you have to stay in the process. You have to stay in it, even though sometimes it could be intimidating. Sometimes it could be discouraging. You, you said you were going to do it. You said it was meant for you. Let's get it. Like That's that's right. just kind of how you have to approach it. And I mean, I've, I'm, I'm on that journey as well. You know, just leaving the sport of basketball. It's scary. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many basketball players do it for such a long time. And they just lose themselves. Because they don't, they never knew who they were in the beginning. Right. Their, their whole Effort. lives, their careers were just predicated on being able to play the sport well. 
So right. if an injury comes, if you know this or that happens, they're not being hired, then they're just stuck trying to find another opportunity to be a basketball player when in, in theory, maybe they were better off starting a cleaning company or going back to grad school or starting their own business doing this or that. Like a, a lot of people kind of get lost in that. But, you know, once you manifest these things, I think it's important that you just say, yeah, it's, it's, it's for me okay. or yeah. it's, it's, it, yeah, we're going to get it in time. Yeah. It's big so about said, I, um, having tunnel yeah. vision too, though. Tunnel vision is so important because it's like, if you already said this is what the vision looks like, why don't you just focus on that? Like, stop being focused on everything mm-hmm. else. You know what I'm saying? Like, how am I going to get it, there? Yeah. Pay attention. Just, just, just pay attention to what's happening. Like, I literally have conversations and I hear keywords. People don't even know that they're giving me the words that I need to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like having yeah, tunnel yeah. vision, it's like you're always looking for your signs. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, the, the signs are there. And I mean, it, that's actually um, a nice transition because I was going to ask you, and I mean, we're here sharing your story, but you you have a YouTube page. And mm-hmm. you're sharing a lot of your experiences, whether it be through food, whether it be through um, just your your story, what we're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. You started a YouTube page way, way back uh, from what you told me. Tell me about that YouTube experience and how it really popped off when you first got yeah. rolling into the experience a long time ago. Um, so that was weird, right? So I did YouTube when I was, I believe, I was like 18. And it wasn't really you gotta, intentional. You got to send me that link too. I will. It yeah, wasn't really intentional. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> it wasn't really like with the intent of having like subscribers or I just, used to watch YouTubes and I'm like, Hey, I want to do videos too. And I would just like, you know, do my makeup on YouTube and post it. And I remember I had a video that had like, I think it was like over 20,000 views and it kind of happened like overnight. And I remember just going on there and I got so scared. I was like, Whoa, because it was like, was that my intentions? Those were not my intentions. Yeah. Like it, I was just posting videos. It wasn't to, I don't know. It's weird because everything it wasn't happened. to go viral. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It was just to post. And if you look, if when I look at that video and I go in the comment section, there's like this influencer who's a big influencer now commenting on my video back in the day, you know? And I'm just like, Every time I wanted to, after that, every time I wanted to post a YouTube video, I used to just be in my head because I'm like, do I have these big pants to fill now that that video went viral? I would watch that video like, what did I do? What did I do in that video that made people, (laughs) you know, want to watch? Did you want to recapture that feeling or was it like, do I, or did you want to stay away from it though? Like how, I wanted to recapture at that time? I wanted to recapture and that's why I'm so big on being authentic because that video was just me just recording a video. It wasn't me recording a video for the world to see, even though that's kind of the territories that come with YouTube. But back in the day, YouTube wasn't like the influencer culture like it is now, you know? Um, But that really, it really took me for a loop. And then I, I just stopped doing YouTube for a long time. I had a hard time being consistent with YouTube until like as of lately. And I understand why, because that the few years, everything that was going on, that did not need to be captured. Like, that's not how I would want anyone to see me. You know what I'm saying? Like in that light, that's not how I would want to share myself. And it's not because that's the process, but that was very, I don't know how to explain it. I didn't really have a, like a real end goal. So it was just posting. There was no purpose behind it. There was no purpose. 
Um, So it wasn't until I got laid off that my TikTok video took off. I was like, this is time. Like, this is this is the time. Because in the same fashion, my intentions were not for my was not for my video to go to go a a form of viral and end up on everybody's for you page. It was just me sharing my thoughts and like where I am in life. And I didn't really, I didn't even have TikTok followers or anything like that. It was just me wanting to document my journey in a short clip. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, I've seen some, some of your content and, you know, you talk about being authentic. This is what Mm -hmm. people are going to relate to at the end of the day. And I think, you know, with YouTube and a lot of times Instagram, YouTube more so than Instagram, it's people may not catch on immediately, but give it time, especially if it's real. If it's real, then people are going to catch on because people can really feel how you feel going through being laid off people Mm -hmm. can feel they can relate to how you feel when it comes to saying to yourself i want more out of out of my life my life's journey or you saying to yourself no i don't want to do this i want to do this and i'm going to give myself to her wholeheartedly i think these think these things are important i think a lot of people can relate to that so mm-hmm. the fact that you're sharing your journey uh, to the public through YouTube, through IG, I think it's really cool, you know, and, and it's brave because yeah. a lot of people only see us as a finished product, right? They only right. see us as these people who have, you know, these material things. We get to eat at this place. We get to uh, dine at these other fine establishments. We wear in this. We, they don't understand that. Listen, there, there was a process that went into this. Like there were some times where I felt alone. There were some times I felt sad. Like I, I was, I felt lost after getting laid off. Like people don't really understand this. So when you give them the background and the picture, they were like the full picture. It just makes that content just that much, just more potent. Right. You know. So the fact that you're doing it is really cool. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of tears, a lot of tears. And it's so funny because even now, like, I give myself voice notes. I recommend people to give themselves voice notes because I have voice notes from just how I'm feeling, especially when I'm feeling low, especially when I'm feeling like super high energy and like, this is going, this is what happened today. And it's like, I talk to myself and I'm like, I can't wait to revisit these voice notes. And I started revisiting some of them and I was like, wow, you've already came so far, right? Like you have already came so far. And it's like, now I'm trying to hold myself back from listening to these voice notes because things started taking off really quick for me. Like now I have people reaching out, hey, come to my restaurant, Um, come to the grand opening, Hey, I'm having an event. Can you come to my event? And like, you know, getting paid to like show up in these spaces now after just sharing my journey and sharing the things that I enjoy doing. And like I said, I wrote down, I want to get paid for living my life. And now it's like, that's what's happening. And I know that this is just like the samples of it all. Like, this is just the start. Like, this is just the beginning. And it to me it warms my heart because it's like I see that my vision is clearing up like it's like it's happening and I'm just like so excited and it's crazy because once it starts happening it's like back to back I got to a phase where every weekend I'll have an email of somebody hey can you come to my restaurant hey can you come do this now I'm just over here like what just because I man that's super cool voiceover of what's going through my head i'm like this is it's it's crazy that's why i say it's like be careful what you ask for and be prepared to be prepared to be faithful 
for what you yeah. ask for and, and don't settle. Don't settle. That's that's big right there. Sin, I'm first of all, I'm happy for you getting like getting the ball rolling. Thank you. Know, you. I think we I think we might have talked about it. No, we didn't talk about it in the summer. Of course, in the pre-recorded meeting, we talked about it a bit. But I'm just so you know, I'm happy for you that you got the got the process rolling. Yeah. And I think you're gonna be, <clears throat> excuse me, a heavy hitter in the the influencer, you mm-hmm. know, just lifestyle uh, <laughs> content sharing space. I just, I because it's authentic and it's real, yeah. you know, and and this is something that is missing from a lot of the entertainment that we get. A lot of people don't want to share the truth because the truth sometimes it puts a stain on on you. You know, yeah. but you know, depending on what we're talking about, it's it's only an enhancement. It makes me a better version of myself. You know, so I just I think you're gonna be a a, a great asset in the space that you're in. And yeah, I'm Thank just happy you. to hear that, you know, things are, are rolling for you. Man. Let me ask you this. All right, so this is a big part of the show, Sam. Okay. This is a big, big part of the show. Manifestation is big. So right. we talked about man- manifestation earlier in the process, earlier in the conversation. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to ask you, what is the perfect scenario for you? That This could be personal, um, professional, or both. What is the perfect scenario for you? moving forward in your life what, what what does that look like for for sin um everything that's happening now on a grand scale um like i say i have desires to be a wife and a mom and have and get paid for living my life like just everything that's starting to take place now but on a grand scale like i love to go to your hotel for free and get paid for it. I love to, you know, travel to this country, get paid for it. Um, One thing that I've learned with like my manifestations is to keep that childlike faith when it comes to your desires and just not really having those expectations. So for me, it's like when anything small happens, you would think I just got a Christmas present like, you know, like the kid on Christmas Day, they know Santa's coming. They yeah. know they're going to get that Christmas present. It's like, I, it's like, I get so excited about it all. And it's like, I know everything is coming because Christmas, right? And it's, I just yeah, right. want it to be exactly this on a grand scale because I'm getting a taste of what it looks like to get paid for living my life. And now those numbers need to run up, you know, it needs to make sense now. Hello. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I'm exactly, I'm, I'm exactly on the path I need to be like, I'm so sure of myself and like, this is manifestation. It's happening. This is prayers. In, it's in real time. It's yeah, it's mm-hmm. happening. And, um, I don't know. It's just, Actually, it's crazy because I have um, I'm launching my cards, my um, healing cards, I like to call it because on my birthday and I didn't really I don't even know where this idea came from. But, you know, we're introverts. We think we live in our heads. I live in my head. And sometimes like I don't have anyone to say it to. I'll write it down. So I started a habit of just writing my thoughts down. And when I felt down, I'll just write something positive to keep me going. Right. And one day I was looking at my notes. I'm like, you have so many things that you just say to yourself. Like, what are you going to do with this? And then I was just like, you know what? I'm going to make cards. And every day I'm going to just flip them to remind myself. And then someone was like, you need to sell these cards. And I was like, you know what? You're right. <laughs> You're right. Because <laughs> I made the cards for myself with no intent to like for anybody else. You know what I'm saying? It was just like to flip it right. to remind myself. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take the leap of faith. Maybe that's part of the passive income. Maybe that's part of the manifestation. Maybe that's part of all the things that I'm asking for. 
but I also have no expectations. That's the thing, saying it's like, why not? <laughs> right. You know, we we always say, what if? The right. real question is, why not? Exactly. What's the worst that could happen? What's exactly. failure? I thought. I mean, failure is failure means that you tried. Right. Failure means that you actually took the chance and you went forward with your idea and you said, let's do it. Let's see what happens. Imagine having this great idea and never trying and talking yourself out of it before you even put in, you know, your feet to the pavement. You, you, you haven't even touched down to see what it feels like. Why not? That's the, that's the right. question, man. And the worst oh, that can good. happen is no, the worst that can happen is no. And guess what? That no, is rejection. You need to be familiar with rejection to be f- successful. Like, I love rejection at this point because it's like, okay, you 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 building me up a little bit. I can't take a no. Bring it. Yep. Yeah, I can take Bring a no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Because because the thing is, like, with the with with the right mindset and the and the right approach gonna be successful no matter where you are that's just it you know so for those people who you know kind of overlooked you or didn't feel that you were this or that all right cool but but again that's the manifestation right what we were talking about earlier listen i already said the job i'm gonna be great right so whether you hired me or whether you want to be you know a collaborator on any of my projects whether it doesn't matter we the job is going to get done with or without you. So that's the approach. Yeah. No. But Got this is. No. All right, Sin. So we wrapping up. We're mm-hmm. wrapping up. Um, what's, what's next for you? What, 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 what's next? You talked about the cards. Mm-hmm. What, what else do you have uh, coming next? So I am going to be having events. Um, moving to Charlotte and, you know, realizing that a lot of because I started my TikTok like you know dating in life is my only friend being my only friend and a lot of the ladies were like I don't have any friends girl let's meet up like let's do this and I started a new Instagram page that went crazy really quick and you know there's a lot of people in Charlotte a lot of women in Charlotte who want to connect so next I'm going to be doing events for women who want to connect who want to meet each other um, I'm, I'm working on that. So I don't really share too much details, but of course. you know, that following already knows like the events are coming and the connections are coming, you know, um, it's just, everything is just baby steps. Everything makes sense. These events. And like I said, everything happens for us. Why did I get a minor in event planning? I had no idea, <laughs> but now it's like, okay, I see it. <laughs> I see why, you know, and I'm excited for that. Um, I'll be in Cameroon for a month because I feel like I need to ground myself. So I'll be going back home March 1st to ground myself and I'll be working from there um, on all the projects that I want to do here. I felt very heavy in my heart. Like you need to go home to really get your head right. And reconnect again. Yeah. So that's what's next. Events are coming. Cards are coming. I have cards right here, actually. The cards are coming. Yeah, put it, put it real close to the screen, says, so we can get it nice and clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you and go. then that's me, actually, in animation form. I have a picture like that. But everything yeah. is coming. It's a slow process. Um, and it's okay to not know what's next. Just trust that you have a vision and then just wake up and walk towards that vision. It's okay to not know how it's going to happen. The right people will come in along your journey, along the way. Yes. And and also, I, I saw your content. Uh, you, you shared uh, your experience at the podcast event. I thought that was really cool. I never, I didn't even talk to you about that in the pre-recording, but I saw the video from that day that you pulled up to the house. Uh, that, yeah. that was cool that you shared it. <laughs> yeah, because you know, I, I, you know, I ask people to actually do that. So the fact that you, you know, you kind of put that in, 
to one of your day in the life uh videos on youtube i thought that was really cool and full uh, circle moment right but, now <laughs> hello who who knew <laughs> who knew talk about alignment yeah but sin listen so we're gonna wrap up like first of all thank you for your time thank you for sharing a bit of your story and before we get out of here share all of your socials we're going to make sure to post it on um by youtube because we're on instagram and youtube we do have a, a tiktok page but maybe sin can help us with that uh yeah. but uh yeah <laughs> share your socials and yeah we'll, we'll wrap up yeah um you can find me on instagram my personal page is sin underscore tala c-y-n underscore tala youtube cynthia tala and then on tiktok views from sin so v-i-e-w-s from sin c-y-n and then i also have my black girl friendly page for charlotte so it's black girl friendly b-l-c-k so no a b-l-c-k girl friendly underscore clt all right, ladies and gentlemen, you got the socials. Go ahead and tap in with Sin. I'm telling you, you better catch her before she catch fire, because then you ain't you 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 won't know what's happening. You're gonna get lost in the shelf. I'm telling you, catch her right now before she pops off. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been another great episode of the Couch of Rob Fields with Sin Tala. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how we give it up when we get out of out of the show. It costs nothing to be good to someone. Be good to someone today. I'm your host, Rob Fields. She's Santala. And we'll catch you <laughs> in the next one. All right, peace. Bye, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>